This is what I woke up to today. Get up and make a video! <laughs> no one should ever have to deal with that. Welcome back, guys. I'm gonna keep my word. The tequila is not happening yet. That's gonna happen later in the month when Ramsey comes out to New York. We're gonna be hanging out, and apparently I'm gonna drink tequila. I'm gonna keep my promise about the tutorial. So today, I'm not giving you one, two, I'm gonna give you three different moves. Uh, one by John Cornelius, one by Jerry Andrus, and one of my own. Jerry Andrus is, man, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about this stuff before we go into it just because I'm a big proponent of understanding where things come from. I, I don't think a lot of you understand how old some of the great moves are. And I want to give you a chance to find out. Jerry Andrus is a magician who sadly passed away, but he was, I believe, ahead of his time in a lot of things, the way he would think about things and the things he would do. Kind of like Derek Dingle. If you don't know who Derek Dingle is, look up Derek Dingle too. I was lucky enough to get a hold of a pair of books that I have right here called the Andrus Card Control Series. And it's two books. One book is all words. The other one is all pictures. Like just looking through this, man. J in jog principles, sidewinder shifts, pivotal slights, slavery, palms, steals, fan steals, counts and changes, reverses, shuffles, color changes. You know, that that's just in this. Like, look at how thin this is, the two books combined. So this is volume one, this is volume two, you get them both together. Loads and loads and loads of amazing moves in here. So the move that I'm gonna teach you from here is called the panoramic shift. It's a move that I used a little bit when I was performing, but it was a move that taught me a lot about performing with angles because it's a very angle sensitive move. And it's where the cherry control, Ricky Smith and his cherry control came from. So it actually came from the panoramic shift. It's his adaptation. Just interesting. Then we're gonna be looking at a move by John Cornelius, which is another favorite move of mine. It's a fan steal. So you, you do a fan, you insert a card, and then when you close the fan, you've stolen out the card. And then the last move is gonna be a weird kind of clippish control that I use. It just kind of puts people off. No, it doesn't put people off. That's, a, that's the wrong way to say that. I like it. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say about it. We have a lot of things to go over. We're gonna be going over, you know, how to get an in jog, pivoting. We're gonna be going over fans and tenkai palms and clips. It's, it's gonna be a long episode. Now, hopefully not too long for you, but I'm gonna be giving you guys a lot of information. The links for this book series and where I learned the fan steal from are in the description. There's tons and tons more in both of those things. One is a DVD, here are the books. Please go check it out. It's just for your benefit. It just gives you tons of tools to use. If you're a guy who does table work, if you're a guy who, who works out in the street or in close-up shows or you know just wants to have fun and, and learn some new knuckle-busting slights, I think this book series is probably the most accumulated knuckle busting slights in one place. There's books like By Forces Unseen, which is a series of slights and routines, mostly routines that involve knuckle busting slights. That's a great book, but I really think this is this is gold right here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be looking at is in here, uh, the Jerry Andrews Card Control Series. This was the first move that really got me started into really wanting to learn hardcore, uh, angly, angle sensitive slights. And uh, it was the first time that I realized that a lot of the people who say that stuff is too angly, frankly, are just too scared to do it. It was it was that awakening moment for me. People who say things like that, I think they're 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 holding back a lot of what they can do, and they use excuses because they don't want to work hard at something. And frankly, I don't care to hear about it. So I'm going to show it to you. If you think it's too angly, then don't do it. It's perfectly fine. Understand that it can open a doorway to a bunch of things that you've probably never done before. So keep that in mind when watching this. Now you're gonna get to see how it's done. It's the first time I saw a move like it and it was crazy to me. And I, ho I hope you yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so the cards that I'm using, they are the bicycle all wheel back number twos. These things are great. I, I mean, they feel wonderful. You know, if you like them, I'll leave a link in the description. 
but these are the ones I'm using. Somebody told me that they wanted to know what cards I'm going to be using, so there you go. Alright, so now we're going to get into the panoramic shift. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, what's going on with the panoramic shift with this weird kind of top-down angle. And then we're going to break each move down step by step. I'm going to show you what you need to know. Now, if you know already know how to get an in-jog from a card replacement this way, uh, you're a step ahead. The only thing is you're going to make it bigger. So here's what's actually happening. So the card's being pushed in. It comes all the way out. Now it's gonna, your thumb is going to clip the card against the palm, and then you're going to bring it around the top of the deck as you wave over the top of the deck, right? Some people might say that this move can't work in the real world, and let me tell you something. I did this move for a long time for actual people. So it does work, and it works very well. You just have to understand your limitations with the move, right? So the first thing you need to know how to do is get the card from the front of the deck to the back uh, with a deep in jog. So uh, after they pick a card, I, I like to riffle, so it gives my thumb a reason to be at the top of the deck, because a lot of people just kind of push things in, and then, yeah, I don't know, it just makes me feel better about it. So you're, you, you riffle down. I, I would say don't go past halfway down the deck. If you go past way, it's just gonna make it harder. So just do it near the top half of the deck, top quarter maybe. And you're just gonna insert the card like so. Now what's gonna happen is this card is going to be pivoted and then pushed through the deck and then straightened. And it's done as you close the deck. So here's what it looks like. Okay, you see it pop out of the back there. But from the front, it looks like this, right? So that's that, and the card's sticking out of the back. The first step is uh, how, you, how you push the card in. So what I like to do is I like to put my thumb right here in the middle of the back of the cards. And then I reach forward with my middle finger to the top corner by the thumb of the hand that's holding the deck. So you're here, you're going to reach forward, and that'll get that corner right there. Now, you're going to push in, but not like this, you're just going to push this corner this way, straight back like this, and when you do that, it makes the card angle out. Now while you're here, you're going to now grab the card with the thumb and the pinky here. I'm going to try to open this up as much as I can, but I have my thumb here, I have my pinky here, and basically what you're going to do is lever that down like that, okay? So you can see it's like a little lever, right? If I, if I swing it out, you can see it better. And once it's here, then you're just going to use your pinky to square back. And that's how you get that deep end jog. Now that's very exaggerated. You obviously don't need it that far. All you need is about halfway maybe even a little less if you have bigger hands, but that's where I like to keep it. The next step is you're going to take the thumb of the hand that is not holding the deck, and you're gonna kick it into the base of the thumb of the hand that is holding the deck. So you're gonna kick it over, and it's okay if it bends a little bit. That's actually okay, it helps it. Just gonna kick it out, and then you're, you're gonna pivot it back onto the top of the deck, and then you can grab it with your fingers, or, or what have you, just try not to move too much. And as you wave back, you're going to push this back onto the deck. So that's the next step. The next step is the pivot. So you have your in-jog, now the car pivots out, and you're gonna come back. Now if you notice, this hand isn't perfectly still. And the reason for that is if I'm just kind of doing something, your hand shouldn't be still. I shouldn't be just doing this, that's awkward. Make it relax, just putting the card in the deck, you give it a little wave, and then you can move on, right? So here, insert the card, deep jog, and now your thumb pivots and puts it back on top of the deck, and then your fingers can square and align it. So that's basically the move. That's pretty much the easiest part, which is gonna sound weird, but that is the easiest part. The harder part is actually understanding the angles, and uh, taking care of sound issues. So let's talk about the angles real quick. This has to be done head on and a little bit of the back of your knuckle showing. If you do this straight head on, you're, they're gonna see the card pop out here like that. 
if you do it too low, obviously they'll see it. If you do it too high, they'll see it. So this kind of move, you have to turn the back of the hand just a little bit towards your spectator. You can get ballsy, and what you do is once you kick the card out, you're gonna pivot back and then tilt the deck up. So what's happening here is this. I'm actually bending the crap out of the card. But from the front, it allows me to keep a much more shallow angle when I'm doing this, right? Put it in, <laughs> right? Kick out the card. Now you're gonna bend, come back, and square at the same time. So that's how you can cheat the angle a little bit. But I would say at first, just stick to the safe angle and then work your way into getting into that much smaller angle. The other thing that can happen is noise. And that happens when the edge of the card, when you pivot this out, if this, I don't know if you can hear that, but if this rubs a little bit, you can get some noise. So that's why I bend the card. So I put the card in, card comes out, now I bend out. And that bending, for some reason, just takes care of the noise. And now all I have to do is tilt my wrist down. See, I'm just pulling the deck down, and that'll clear the edge of the deck. Now my thumb can grab it, and I can align the deck. I can align the card to the deck. So that, in a nutshell, is the panoramic shift. It's not an easy move, it's knacky. If you wanna learn more about the panoramic shift or other shifts that use things like that, table shifts, tons of other stuff, you need to go check out that Jerry Andrews series. Uh, I left the link in the description. You should check it out, it's got tons of good stuff. So the John Cornelius fan steal, when I first saw it, I was floored. I had no clue what was going on. And then when he explained it, I was even more impressed. I, I was like, this is great. It's, it, he even says it, it looks like a machine is doing it. And when you see it done, it really does. And I thought it was super cool. I haven't really found a lot of uses for it because it leaves you in a Tenkai palm, but I hope you like it. I enjoyed it. I enjoy showing it to people. And it's one of those things that if you go to a convention or something, it's like a, a cool trivia thing, like, you know, where, have you ever seen this before? You go, nope, never seen it, and John Cornelius, and makes you look like a genius. So, I mean, what am I doing? I'm giving away all my good stuff here. Makes me look like a genius. I gotta stop doing this. All right, all right so this is the John Cornelius fan steal. It's in Creative Magic of John Cornelius. I saw it on a VHS tape years ago when it first came out. And he has so much good stuff on there. There's so many other things on there that are just amazing. But this is what I'm gonna show you guys. And hopefully it'll spark you to go and pick up the magic of John Cornelius because he is an amazing, an amazing thinker. And he's still around and he, man. The fan steal from underneath looks automatic. And I'm gonna show you why, because it, it really does. So here's what it looks like from underneath. The card goes into the fan, you close up the fan, and then it kicks out right into your Tenkai. So we'll break down the steps as to how this works. And uh, you know, here you're gonna learn how to do a fan steal and you'll learn what a Tenkai Palm is. Tenkai Palm is usually used for that cheesy thing like this where you make a card vanish and reappear. Uh, I've always hated it, but I hate it. Don't do it, just stop doing it. Please stop doing it. I'll, I'll like you better if you don't do it. If you come up to me and you do this, I might just walk away from you. I'm just saying. So the first thing you need to know about the fan steal is the fan. So we're gonna go over a thumb fan very quickly, and then I'm gonna show you how you have to change the fan to get this to work well. So the first thing you're going to do is align the bottom of the deck with the ring finger of the hand you're gonna fan it. Now, when I mean the ring finger, I don't mean the ring finger here in the palm just the ring finger like that okay so just the ring finger uh, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little pressure with your thumb here and your uh, thumb that's holding the deck is obviously gonna be somewhere near the middle don't hold it like this flat you just want a, a point of pressure so the thumb of the opposite hand is gonna come and it's gonna contact the corner the top corner of the cards closest to the palm so you're gonna push here and now you're just gonna bring this in a circle. Now, if you do it slow, it's gonna look like crap, but that's the thumb fan. So if you do it fast, right, see it smooths out. Once you've done this a little while, you'll start to realize something. And one of those things is that if you pull back with your index finger, 
you can get a more circular fan and that's what makes the fan nice right like when you see people do it they do stuff like this and it's like this line it's like yeah that's cute right but you want the nice big circle that's what makes it awesome and that's what gets you the ladies i guess um, once you know how to do a thumb fan, or if you already know how to do a thumb fan, now you have to move fingers because you're going to have to contact the card that was selected. So once you're here, you're gonna take this middle finger and you're gonna bring it forward and you're gonna be, you wanna get past that little nub. When you do a thumb fan, you notice there's a little nub there. So you wanna get past that nub with your fingers. You see that? Now my fingers are straight. And this is what's going to allow me to, I'm just gonna use a blank card for now. This is what's gonna allow me to to contact the card to close up the fan. You're gonna take the selection and you're not gonna put it in the middle like this because if you put it in the middle, it's too far over. So instead, you're gonna come closer to the area where your thumb uh, crotch is, I guess. Thumb crotch? Is that, is that a thumb crotch? It's a thumb crotch now. So you're gonna put the card closer to the thumb crotch and insert it. And what that does is underneath, it brings it almost out of the deck completely. Right, see that? But it's still, looks like it's going into the fan. You can tap it in and all that stuff. This is where you end up. So from here, you're going to continue to contact the card with your middle finger, and your opposite hand is going to point like an L, right, or a seven, right, outward, and you're gonna contact the card closest to your wrist to close the fan with the middle finger. So underneath, this is what's happening. Okay, so you're closing, you're closing. Now you hit the card. Okay, so I'm contacting that card right now. So from here, you're gonna take the middle finger of the hand holding the fan, and you're gonna push it towards the opposite wrist. And now you close up the spread, and, the, and if you just stop here, the card's out of the deck now, right? So if I just relax my thumb, as I was here, right? Relax the thumb, the card comes right out. So you put the card in, um, far edge of the fan, contact the card, close up the fan like this and then from underneath you're going to push this middle finger towards this wrist and it pivots right out and then from the top you just relax your thumb and it just goes right into a tenkai now i actually do a tenkai incorrectly and that's mostly because of the size of my thumb i have actually small thumbs so a tenkai typically uh should be near the middle of the palm and then your thumb touches the outside of the card like that and now for most people the card would actually be like this but because of the size of my thumb it's pressed up against the palm of my hand here right when you're doing this for you your hand could be like this unless you have short thumbs like me or smaller hands so your your thumb could be here but when you turn around to the back this is the angle right now, if your thumb is longer, obviously this card can go lower. The problem with this palm, though, is that, you know, you could spread these fingers out, but it looks like you have a thumb accident. But for the fan steal, once you get the card in, and the card just does this, all you have to do is here, and pull away, and the card is in Tenkan. Your hand just relaxes, and now you can replace this if you want by going to reach for something. You can produce it, go into your pocket, you know, produce it. You do the old Bill Malone thing, I guess, where you pull it out of the pocket. So if there's in Tenkan, you just do this. There you go. So you do your thumb fan. You're going to take the selection. Selection goes into the fan deeper towards the thumb. Tap in. From underneath, you're gonna close up the fan using that weird kind of finger grip like this. You close up, once the card hits, once the finger contacts the card, you push that finger towards the wrist, the card gets extended out, your thumb relaxes around the card, and then you just pull away. And that's basically it. That's the Fan Steal by John Cornelius. So the last move, I don't have a name for it, so I'm just gonna call it the spin clip, I guess, spin clip. It's a pretty stupid name. That's a good name. It doesn't matter, spin clip is what it is now. I was inspired a lot by the clip shift by Chad Nelson and by a friend of mine named Jed Smith who has a move called the Jedi move, which he can take a card from the bottom, reverse it, push it into the middle of the deck, and I actually think he, he sells it now. But, I mean, you can look for it. Jed Smith, he's a genius, you should look him up too. 
it's, it's, it's a fun move to do, you know, if you really think about what the move does, you can reverse cards on the table, you can do a couple of weird things with it, but I just use that as a simple control sometimes, just because it's very casual, it's very soft, the card doesn't leave you in some weird palm, it's, it's in a very soft clip. We'll go over it, I hope you like, it's not easy, nothing I've been teaching here is really that easy. I, I really hope you enjoy it, this is the kind of stuff that I do, and it's the kind of stuff that will set you apart from everybody else, especially those who make a lot of excuses, like it's too hard, so it's not too hard for me, Can't, it won't be too hard for you, you just gotta put work into it. Alright, step one, so this is not a spectator pick a card type of thing, this is you have them look at something, or if you just want to set up for a color change you can do that. Um, but basically, this is just a fun little control that I used to do for a while, mostly because I was bored. It was just interesting to me. I would reverse cards with this, but basically what's happening is this. So if I just use half the pack, you could use the whole pack and do it, but I just think it looks dumb with the whole pack. Here's what's going on. So you're going to, if you show the spectator the card, it'll, it'll do this and then you'll come back and do it. If not, you'll just be here. I'll just go through the mechanics of it. This is kind of tricky. You're gonna hold the cards with your thumb in the middle of the pack and then your middle finger by the front edge. If you're doing it face up like me, and you're right-handed, your middle finger will be right by the pip of the card here. So that's how you're holding it. it. It feels a little weird at first because the pressure is offset, but that's what makes it work. So the next step is you're going to have to press, let me see how I can show you. You have to press this corner against your palm. See how I'm bending that in? Right, so you're gonna press it against there so that your pinky can clip this card out, and then you're gonna grab it in between the middle finger that's holding the pack and the fat of your pinky or the base of your pinky okay that's where it's being held so no other finger is holding that card except that it looks weird right I don't know I think it looks cool so that's the first step so you pinch grab and now your fingers are free so if I were to take this away it stays in that grip and then I can just lay it down and that's basically what I'm doing you just here and then you just rest it down. That's the whole move. From the front, when you get to here, right, you pivot and then you just square. And that's it. So let's let's look a little bit more at this move because this is not easy at all to do and it takes people a long time. So I'm gonna go deeper into where the fingers need to be because if your fingers are in the wrong place, it just won't work. This fold of my middle finger, the first fold, is going to touch almost the top card, maybe a little bit deeper than the top card. Then my thumb, if you notice, I'm not holding it like this. My thumb is right at the edge. This gives me the most amount of movement in this packet that I can get. Because if I have it here, then it's just kind of locked in, right? So you don't want that. So you want that right there, right at the edge. So you're gonna press in, and if you, if you notice, now I have no space between that packet and my hand. From here, you're gonna have to develop a muscle. I don't know if you could see it, but me practicing stuff like this, I actually have a lump. That's a muscle that I developed from doing these moves. It's weird. So you're gonna do this, you're gonna pull. Now, I'm not pulling back, I'm pulling away from my middle finger. So sideways. See that? Now, you're going to push it back against the middle finger and now it's clipped so once you pull this card over now you're gonna pivot your thumb up just a little bit and you're gonna push with your middle finger back against that card and that's how you're gonna hold it right there now this packet comes away you can use your ring finger underneath to pivot this as you rotate your hand back and square if you're gonna have a spectator look at a card They'd look at the card, you come to here, you square up, and that's the control. Actually, what I'll do is this, I'll leave it face down. So here, to there, to there. Right? And that is the control side of it. If you want to do it as a color change, you're more than welcome to. I would not suggest just doing this, pivoting this out, and then squaring it up. I think it looks cheesy. If you just happen to be doing something here, I think this makes a little bit more sense. You know, you show the card go by, and now you can just give it a square. So, you know, if you have a selection, and it's on the bottom of the deck, you know, oh, let's see, is it here? Is it this one? Well, I guess we, I guess we lost the card. Um, just concentrate for a second. 
There you go. It's very important that you make sounds or else your magic won't work. So now let's talk about angles. Once you get this here, the whole point is to try to keep this card in line with your spectator's eye. So my, your eye, since you're in the camera, is at this weird kind of low angle. So for you, I would have to keep the card right there, right? So here's where the card is for me. And that's what keeps you from seeing the card, right? Normally when you're performing it, you'd be a little bit more casual. You come down to here, and now you can do this. But you see from here, for the camera, I'm flashing because the camera's actually lower than most spectators' eyes would be if you're performing for adults, obviously. That is the angle thing. So you come here, you pivot, it stays. You see that? Your thumb is what does the rest of the pivot. So you pivot like this, up, and then you meet this packet that comes up. You pull away, and then you drop. Right? So that is the control. You can use it as a color change. Um, just do it for fun as an exercise, whatever you like to do. Uh, I used it for a while. It's now yours. You can do what you want with it. I really hope you like it. I hope you get something out of it. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about angles with these things right now. That's that's it, man. Those are those are the moves. Those are the slights. The whatever you want to call them. Um, they're tools to me. Everything you do has a bad angle. A double lift, a top change, a pass, a, a palm, a retention van, anything in, in magic has a bad angle, unless it's something that happens mechanically and out of your hands. Then there's no bad angle, right? Because it's covered or somewhere else. Anything you do in magic, you want to cover these things up. You want to cover them as best as you can. Think about that when you're performing. A mirror is not really the good thing, the best thing to use. Actually, I like a camera because you can move the camera around to different angles. If you're performing for somebody shorter or taller than you at a weird angle than you're not used to, don't be scared of angles. And if any magician anywhere tells you that something isn't good because it's too angly, just tell them to shut up. I really don't care. I think, I think it's an excuse and I don't want to hear it anymore. We should be trying to elevate things, not keep things the same. And if you're surrounded by people who just want to keep things the same, move on, man. Just move on. Anyway, I hope you like what I showed you today. Um, please check out those books and, and that video by John Cornelius and by Jerry Andrus. It's got really, really good stuff in there. Stuff that you can change yourself and, and make something better. You know, who knows? That's the point. So please check that out. If you like what I did, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for all the support. Uh, let me know what kind of stuff you wanna see next. Obviously, some things I will do, some things I won't do. You know, thanks a lot again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.